welcome to my drunk craft room. Gotcha! No, I am not drunk, and this is white grape juice. I don't drink, so I am toasting you with what I do have. Here's to a great and creative 2013 ahead. In today's video, I have a Copic coloring tutorial on a Sparkle Creations image, and I'm doing double duty for Uzak, who carries the Sparkle images, as well as the Copics that I'll be using, and the papers and everything else, and Sparkle Creations, and I am their guest designer this month. So I thought I would combine efforts and do a coloring tutorial on one of the great sparkle images. And this is Cupid Emily. She is so sweet and perfect for Valentine's or even a love card. Doesn't have to be a Valentine. So I'm going to start coloring with my dark colors. Some people go with their light colors first, but I'm one of those who goes with the darks first. And I'm going with my E53 to do the shadows in the skin. I typically do start with a skin on almost any image and that is because if I color any dark hair or dark clothing around the skin then I might start pulling some of that ink from those darker areas into the skin color because the light colors will pick up the darker ones pretty easily and um, contaminate them possibly. So I just want to put my skin tones down first and I'm adding the shadows on the bottom side of everything as you can see. The light is coming from the top in this image and with my E51 I'm just filling it all in completely with the E51 marker after finishing with my shadows. And if I go in fairly quickly, fairly soon after coloring with the E53, it's going to blend really easily as long as the markers are good and juicy. If your markers start to dry out you'll notice they don't blend very easily and you're going to have to really work hard at it. On her legs I added a lot more shadow right under the dress simply because the dress is going to cast a shadow and block the light. So um, next is the hair and I'm using a combo to make a strawberry blonde hair and the E23 is going to be what I'm going to use for the shadows. Now a lot of people have certain color combinations they love for hair. I trade around a lot. I do a lot of different things with all my different markers. I now, yay, have the whole collection of Copics. So I play around with all different kinds of stuff to see kind of what I like. And I don't usually have a particular go-to cole um, collection of colors for hair. So there you have it. <laughs> this one is going to be um, YR24 for the medium color. And I'm just extending the reach of the areas that I've already added the darker brown to and stretching them out a little bit further. I'm still leaving some light area and I'm flicking with the tip of the marker. If you go with the side of the marker you're going to get a lot fatter of a line so I want to keep it fairly thin. I'm not going to get super detailed on her hair. Sometimes I do and, and I'll draw in every hair and really make it super realistic but I'm just going to do quick coloring on this one. I'm not going to drag it out a whole lot more than that. And next I'm going to take a lighter yellow and I'm just going to fill all of that in uh, with the YR21. And some folks like to leave some white, um, like a white highlight. And while that's perfectly fine, it's a lot of more work to do than to just fill it in. And if you actually look at someone's hair, it's very rare that you see someone with an actual white highlight unless they are a gray-haired person. So I tend to just fill in almost all hair um, unless I'm really going super, super light with the colors. And with this strawberry blonde, I decided to just fill it in and make it all warm and yummy and strawberry blonde looking. Now my next color is going to be the pinks. I want the underside of the dress to be darker than the um, top side. So I'm going in with my RV14 and I want to make sure that I get the shadows done in there. Uh, with that. If the light is coming from ab above, it's going to block out the light on the underside of the dress. So I'm using an RV25 for the second color. You can hardly tell in the video the difference between the two colors, but I do promise you there is a difference between them, uh, but they are very close to each other. So I've got that all filled in and now I'm going to add um, the shading on the top of the dress with the medium tone. So I'm going in with the RV25 and that will make it match the bottom of the dress without um, 
overpowering it and making it too dark on the top. Um, so I'm going to fill in where the, the folds of the fabric are, where the fabric gathers, and then right underneath of where her hand and everything else are that would cast shadows. Next is RV23, and I'm just going to fill in solid across the entire dress and just fill in the whole thing completely. And um, if you're watching this later, I will have some links in the doobly-doo down below um, to my other blog posts that will have some other colorations of this dress. I, I did another test one with a red dress and black hair and another with sort of some lighter brown hair and a gauzy pink dress. So in the next couple of days those will go up on my blog and I will link to them in the doobly-doo down below. Uh, now I'm using the same medium and light colors for her hairband and adding the shadows on the bottom part of the hairband right behind that heart and then on the bottom of the heart going up to the lighter side. The wings. Now I'm using the B000 on the wings. You can use even 1020s or 30s, whatever blue you have. Uh, blue tends to add a little bit of a look of white without adding a whole lot of color. You can use a gray, but a blue adds a little more of a cheerful color, I think. So I'm just adding a little bit under each one of the feathers. And now I'm going to finish it off by coloring in the bow that she's holding. And we just use the same pinks that I've been using for the rest of the dress and uh, fill that in a little bit. Next will be the assembly of the card. I've got the pieces already cut out and um, this is all papers by Basil from their Miss Tegan Sue line. And I have them layered and I have some faux stitching done on them, which I will show you in just a moment. And I'm layering on some plain papers, some solids, because you're going to see she'll pop better against the solid papers when the time comes to add Emily to the card. Now on this, this piece of pink, I have hand pierced these holes and I didn't make them real carefully. I just kind of did them by hand and eyeballed it. And now I'm dragging the pen and letting it drop into the holes. That makes it look like real stitching. Now here she is all fussy cut and I used, instead of cutting out the um, strings, I tied them on instead using holes. I didn't glue it on. I, I poked, poked holes through the thing so that her string could be tied onto it. And that saved me a lot of fussy cutting around those parts. And all I had to cut was her arm and the bow. And I know to some people even the amount of cut, fussy cutting I did do is too much. but. There you go. I tried to at least make it a little simpler for myself. And then all I had to do was cut out a duplicate stamp of the, uh, the arrow itself and then glue that on top. And that covers up the place where I had the holes and attached the string. And all I have left is a little bit of embellishing and the card will be completed. So here you see it all finished. I've got the sentiment added and I cut it on a wave and um, you can see the hearts and the ribbon down below just add a whole lot of love to the card and her hair really matches the papers that I've picked really well. Here's a close-up of looking at the bow and arrow and how that worked out. I also added glossy accents to the arrow and the wings and the little heart on her hairband just to add some shimmer and shine to it and make sure you let that dry really good because it stays sticky for a bit. Here's a close-up of the hearts, and I added some bling as well as some dots of glossy accents around the heart um, that adds some interest to it and some shine without adding a lot more to take away from Emily so you can actually see her better. Thank you so much for taking a moment to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button down below. You can also hit subscribe down there and get email notices when I put a new video up. And as well, I would love for you to leave me a comment about your crafty New Year's resolution. What is on your plan for 2013? Thanks so much and have a great year ahead.